and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware of all that's happening in the faith-based film industry. Uh, my guest today has worked primarily on films featuring John Schneider, whom he has greatly admired since the classic TV show Smallville. For the past year, Michael Warren has been living his dream working with and mentored by John and Alicia Schneider. Michael has been involved with John's first gospel music album and two feature films, written, directed, and headlined by, uh, rather headlined by John at his John Schneider Studios in Holden, Louisiana, near Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Michael, welcome to Faith on Film. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you, my friend? I'm doing terrific. Uh, must be awesome being out there in Dukes of Hazard land. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's been very awesome. It's been a blessing from God. I can't explain it um, beyond a blessing because uh, I've been a huge fan of John since I watched Smallville when, since I was a young kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been a huge blessing to have, been, have met John in the last uh, year. In 2019, I met him at a, I met him at a Comic Con, actually. And, oh. uh and uh, I wanted to work for him so much, I uh, asked if I could work for him, and he let me work for him, and uh, we've been together since then, and he's allowed me to uh, work on two of his projects so far, Christmas Cars, and uh, we're now working on a new feature called uh, Stand On It, uh, filming now. Wow. So listen, so I, I don't know how long you've been uh, in this industry or whether this is something you wanted to do since you were a kid, uh, but why don't you take the last the, or the next, uh, you know, five minutes or so and just give us your story. <laughs> Tell us your journey into filmmaking. Well, I started, um, I actually started back in 2011. Uh, I had, I, I'm actually a triplet. Oh, wow. I a, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I have a twin brother and a twin sister. And they were very, were all very close, and uh, my twin brother and I uh, wanted to go into acting, so we started on this first feature called Shark Night hmm. back in 2011. Got our first small featured role in that film, and then we went back and uh, started doing other films in New Orleans, as far as uh, 21 Jump Street. I worked on that. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that. All right. Yeah, and uh, we had feature roles in that, and we continued. And my brother and I both moved to California back in uh, 2015 to continue our acting career. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, we worked on several features out there, as well as other jobs, but we worked on a film called Impact Event, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be released this year. Um, I was the... Uh, line producer for that film as well as the producer my brother was the second assistant director for that film wow so uh, you actually are more of a veteran than i thought um oh yeah now traveled a lot over my journey sure now have you been a christian through all this time or uh was that something more recent oh yeah my grandfather i was raised by my grandfather as a young kid okay. i was uh he was a Bible smuggler most of his life. He, uh, he smuggled Bibles to uh, wow. Bulgaria, Russia, M Romania. And uh, he was a great guy. He uh, raised me to believe in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and truly believe, you know, everything that he's told me. And the thing is, I continued his ministry after he passed. Oh, my goodness. Well, I went to Bulgaria in 2018 to continue my Bible, my grandfather's Bible, my Bible ministry, and he uh, and we smuggled many Bibles. Wow, you know, you are my biggest surprise on this show that I've ever had because everybody, else, most most of my guests are people that I've known for a while, and I know a lot about them, and I know you know their careers. Uh, you, I didn't really know that much about, and I got to admit, I couldn't find a lot online when I was doing research. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you, you seem to be pretty kind of quiet about a lot of this, but surprisingly, my goodness, you've got you've had quite a life. Yeah, I have, <laughs> and it was uh, 
doing my first Bible ministry overseas was a, uh, it wasn't easy. I had a, quite a challenge because I didn't know they had plugs that were different from the United States. So I kind of had to learn from experience. But, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I got to meet my grandfather's friends that Bible, smuggled Bibles many years, people that he's helped. And this was like months before I got wow. involved with, with John. I got involved with John back in, uh, it was February 2019. I did my first Bible ministry in 2018 of October. So it, was, it, was, it wasn't that long before I got involved with John that I did all this. And uh, My goodness. My grandfather passed away in 2015, and uh, I wanted to continue his ministry. That was my goal for the longest time, but then I got involved with John, and I just kind of, I just got hooked. You know, John's a good guy. Him and Alicia are good people, and they kind of took me in as their mentors. And wow, they, you know, and being with John, I, I kind of look at him as a mentor because mm-hmm. I watch him as he directs, I watch him as he produces, I watch him as he edits. And I watch him as the person that he is, and I get to see the the different different version of John that no one gets to see. That is so wonderful to hear. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break right now, and then uh, when we come back, I want to hear a little bit about uh, some of the projects that you're working with John. And then I've got another question for you that may, be a, uh, may shed a little bit more light on, on you and in your personality and who you are, all right? So don't go away, all right? All right. Folks. You too, don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film. I'm here with Michael Warren, who I have to admit, it's kind of blowing my mind right now because I'm thinking that I'm, you know, uh, interviewing just somebody that's involved in filmmaking and come to find out this young man has been... uh, smuggling Bibles into I'm not even sure where maybe we'll ask him that right now and find out where it is that he has smuggled Bibles to if he can even say Michael so tell me more about this I, I know this program is faith on film but I have to admit I'm very very interested in what you're talking about here with Bible smuggling where is it that you have smuggled these Bibles to well my grand well, I have, I, when I did my ministry my grandfather bi- smuggled Bibles to Bulgaria Bulgaria but uh yeah, but and I went to Bulgaria to continue his ministry, and we printed a new gospel. Uh, actually, it's dedicated to my grandfather. This book right here. Um, uh-huh. Can you see? Yeah. And uh, we uh, we dedicated that Christian book to my grandfather after his passing, and oh, wow. uh, we smuggled it through Bulgaria, and uh, with the help of my grandfather's friend Agi and her. You know, his wife, Bobby, we uh, uh-huh. smoked many Bibles, and we're looking for another ministry soon. I hope I didn't get you in any danger by uh, having you tell us where you're smuggling yeah. Bibles to, uh, you know. Uh, but let's get back to filmmaking then. Uh, and, you know, you you are working now with uh, with John Schneider at his studios. Um, there's a film that you, uh, that, I guess, is it his first film that he's done uh, out of his studios? No, it's, uh, it's it's one of many. It's he's one done, of many. Uh, he's done many there from his studios. This is, okay, this is the first one you've been yeah. a part of. Yeah, uh, Christmas Cars was his probably fifth film that he's done here. He's done uh, many others since then, and he's uh, working on one now called Stand on It. But uh, Christmas Cars was, was released last year. It was the one I worked on. I was the uh, I was an actor also in it. I was okay. uh, the uh, set dresser for the film, and uh, I got to work on the entire feature before. That was actually when I first met John. That was the first okay. feature he passed me on and put me on, and, and uh, it was a great adventure. You were involved in all of this. Yeah, I was involved in it. Um, that is so cool. I worked on it. I worked on it every day, and it was. I tell John every day, every day working for John is an adventure. <laughs> and, you know, his saying is he loves that. Now, so it's a, I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but, <laughs> boy, I sure would love to interview John Schneider. So I'm going to have to have you work on that, all right? 
I will definitely work on that. Okay. Now, uh, actually, I'm already working on that. <laughs> you are fantastic. He's not going to walk like right behind you right now or anything like that, is he? <laughs> uh, no, 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 but definitely, yeah. I, you know, I would appreciate John, that very much. Yeah, John's one of the hardest working people I know. He's dedicated yeah. to film, he's a great Christian guy. He believes in good filmmaking, and I respect him. And by the way, That's, he's a pretty good dancer. I uh, I saw him uh, on uh, Dancing with the Stars, and I actually thought he you know, did funny. quite well. It's funny, because I saw him two months before I uh, met him mm -hmm. on Dancing with the Stars. I watched him the whole season, right? and I wrote him and told him I was a big fan. And he didn't see it until later that year. That's true. Yeah. And that's I did write him while they were doing the live shows. I, I actually also text or texted him, uh, messaged him on Facebook, and I said, uh, "You really are doing good. Uh, you know, just keep up the good work." And he responded. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I did the same thing. I wrote the same message. It was funny. I was like, "Man, I, I just loved you dancing on that show." And it took him a year. I said, "Someday he's yeah. gonna see the message," and he saw it. And I was happy as I could be. <laughs> wow. Now, I have a question for you now that's uh, probably a little more personal here. What do yeah. you like best, uh, the whole filmmaking process or the Bible smuggling? Both. <laughs> Both. Because, uh, that's a good answer. That's a good well, answer. Obviously. Because I, um, my grandfather, I wouldn't be here without my grandfather. Right. He, uh, he raised me. He um, he wanted me to meet John. He was very impassioned about my dreams, and now that, that I'm so living neat. it, that is I so have neat. to I have to I have to put him in the dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's that's wonderful. I'm I'm glad you had uh, you know that great relationship with your grandfather, and, and you know to the point where you're. Really honoring his legacy by continuing to do what he uh, well, obviously enjoyed so much. The films that I work on here and, you know, and mm -hmm. many other things. He was a good guy. And a great grandfather. That's wonderful. So now if people want to, you know, follow you, whether it be because of your filmmaking or your Bible smuggling, and they want to, you know, just be a part of what you're doing, uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Now, don't Facebook. don't give out your whole, your phone number. Just you know, you have a website, or <laughs> do you have an email where people can write you? A Facebook page? Well, well I have a Facebook page. Okay. In fact, I have two. I use one. That, I use one of my Facebooks to promote John. I, I use them more than promote John. I promote Jane Gotson. I promote oh, yes. many other. I promote I promote many singers and mm -hmm. you know people throughout my Facebook, and I have a, a personal page. But I also would suggest going to John Snyder Studios and promoting him, you know. But I, uh, I, I usually just like promoting John through my page. You know? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but but if they want to follow you, then the best thing is just to go to your page, right? Yeah, through Facebook. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, really enjoyed having you on the program. I know we've been uh, trying to make this happen for quite a while now, and... Uh, Finally, oh, yeah. finally, we're able to make it, and uh, you know, I appreciate the time, and I really, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm blown away by learning this whole Bible smuggling thing, and uh, that just well, gives me a whole new perspective of you. Well, truthfully, I grew up on, I grew up, my grandfather, when I was a young kid, I grew up with that Bible smuggling. He would leave, go do Bible smuggling. I was raised by my dad. He'd come back, and I just learned a lot. And then when I got older, I was raised by my grandfather. Yeah. And I learned a lot from him. When he passed away, I said, you know what? I'm going to continue his ministry. That is so fantastic. Now, if people want to get that book that you talked about there, can they also uh, just reach you through your personal page? or? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to send this book to them. Um, it's based on, It's actually a dedication to my grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be happy to send it to them. And if they, if they need any copies of Christmas cars or... This was a recycling grace, which was a true blessing from God because I never thought that I would be a producer on John's first gospel album wow. until yeah. he contacted me. We went to a um, comic con. 
we asked John, do you have a gospel album? We wanted to buy a gospel album from him. He said, I've never done a gospel album, but it's something I want to do someday. And so I helped John create his first gospel album. Wow. And to me, it's very special. I share it on Facebook all the mm -hmm. time. I know you've probably seen it. And mm -hmm. it's very special to me because I helped him do that. And, you know, he, he lived with Johnny Cash for one year. And Johnny Cash, he, John, John Schneider told me this. He said, I told Johnny, what do I need to do to do a gospel album? And Johnny told John this. He said... The time will come when your first gospel album will come. And when John told me that, I felt like God chose wow. me to be a part of that. That is and, so wonderful. And that is, a, it, well, it's very special to me sure. in the fact that I feel like I'm very, I was chosen to do a task chosen by God. That's terrific. Well, thank you again for taking this time. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of what you're doing and say hello to John for me and his wife and let him I know will. I'm waiting to do the show with him. All right. I will. I will definitely do that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film. It's time for another episode of Peculiar People produced by Stephen Lewis. This one on cell phone kids. Take a look. Do your children have a cell phone? Oh boy. Let's talk about it. You went too early. Oh no you didn't. Let's do it again. Okay. Welcome to Peculiar Parenting. Parenting, where we do this parenting thing God's way. Let's get into it. I was fortunate enough to experience a little bit of the era before cell phones existed. First came the pager. Girl, who is this paging me? Your mama. Your mama. Your mama, you Girl. need to stop. <laughs> As technology gets more and more advanced, there are all these new gadgets with tons and tons of amazing features. But how are they affecting people? And what are they doing to our families? Oh dear, I had the longest day at work. Oh my gosh. It was like Tommy and Nancy. This other girl, she's new, I'm not even sure of her name. I can't believe she liked that post. That's cool. Uh oh. Yeah, tell me yeah. about it, tell me about it. I right. just Wait, told hold you about it. Hold on, hello? <sighs> Dog, what's up? Hey, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna hit you right back. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit you right back. Girl, I love you. And I mean, just everything. You just mean everything to me. You're my world, girl. You're my world, girl. Girl, are you on yourself? Huh? Now, did you see me talking to somebody? You did not see me talking to anybody. <laughs> You're right, girl. I love you. And I mean, not to mention that cell phones have given our children an all-access pass to inappropriate adult content that can easily be hidden from the eyes of parents. Recently, I had a youth approach me about prayer for their younger brother. I said, "Well, what's wrong with your younger brother?" They said, "He's addicted to porn." I said, "Well, how old is your younger brother?" They said, 10 years old." I said, "Well, how does your 10-year-old brother get access to porn?" And they nonchalantly said, "He has a cell." Phone. That's why you need to be nosy parents. Mm. When it comes to your kids and electronics, there is no such thing as my or mine. It is ours. And when we lived in the group home, our boys better not even have a locked door. But is this is it door locked? Did he Johnny open this door? No! No, oh, no? Okay, okay, excuse me. Right back. Okay, here you go. Uh-huh. That'd be the last time. He say no to us. What's up, John? What's up? No! And that leads us to the word no. A no response from your child is like a cuss word and should not be handled passively. It should be dealt with aggressively at the first hint or inkling of its utterance. Johnny, you know the rules. Whenever I'm speaking with you, I need you to put your phone away. Johnny. 
trying to give me that phone. <laughs> give you my phone. No. <laughs> Sad. You gave me the phone. All right. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> Okay. Just, just kidding. Okay. I'm just kidding. But remember mm -hmm. the symbolism that God intended in a child's relationship with his parents. Allowing them to say no to you is teaching them to say no to their Heavenly Father. So just make sure they, they never, never say, say no, no to, to you, you again. again. Hit us up in the comments and let us know what you think. And that's it for now. See you next time. Dear, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> you didn't <laughs> wink. You have to wink. I'm done. Okay, wait. No. I'm <laughs> We'll be right back. Let it on my heart show. Welcome back to Faith on Film. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's program. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation today with Michael. I have to admit, that was a surprise to me. I had no idea that he did something outside of filmmaking. Bible smuggling, that's really amazing. You know, and it's great to see a young man honor his grandfather the way uh, Michael is doing by uh, continuing in that legacy of smuggling Bibles. I want to ask you to please pray for him because that's not an easy thing to do. That's a That can be pretty dangerous, actually. So just keep him in your prayers. Make sure that God is protecting him at all times. Now, where do I go from here? Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to remind you to write me. I just want to hear from you. I want to know that you're out there watching this program. So write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. That's at faithonfilmtv. And I also want to remind you to check out Parables TV, a place where you can watch some wonderful movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. Simply go to parables.tv. That's parables.tv. So remember, if you want to keep your soul healthy, just feed it some good, healthy entertainment. Until next week, take care.